in San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. We begin with late breaking news. San Antonio. Katrina Weber joins us live. We are in the. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Stephanie. Go, go ahead, Katrina. We're yeah, good morning. We're in the 700 block. We're in the 700 block of North Colorado. This is where the fire broke out just about a half hour ago. It didn't take long for firefighters to knock it down, though. Uh, the house is just behind these uh, fire hydrant, fire engines, so it's difficult to see. But they tell us that this was a vacant house, although they did find someone inside. They actually had to go in and rescue a woman from the back of the house. Uh, they say that she appeared to have suffered smoke inhalation. But they, although they had EMS standing by, she took off running. So they did not have a chance to even treat her. Uh, firefighters believe that she might have been staying in the house, even though no one was supposed to be living there. Again, they did knock down the fire very quickly. It did not spread to any of the homes nearby. You can see that those other homes are very close, but they were able to uh, spare those and not have any damage happen to those. The house, which again was supposed to be vacant, does seem to have some major damage, but no sign of the woman who firefighters rescued from inside. Although she did have smoke inhalation, they say she took off running. Reporting live just west of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Super Tuesday is over. Now it's time for election results in the race for United States president. Former President Donald Trump easily won the Texas primary over Republican Nikki Haley. And here's a look at the numbers here in Bear County. We're going to have more primary election coverage coming up. But for now, let's go ahead and check in with Mike. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, if you uh, didn't hear or weren't outside yesterday, we did hit 91 degrees. First time we uh, were up in the 90s officially out there at the airport since way back on October 21st. Uh, but the, the it was kind of comfortable because we had that drier air. That was just kind of a fond memory because the humidity is starting to work its way back in here. We still have a dew point down to 45, so it's comfortable, but that's higher than what it was yesterday, and it's going to continue to increase throughout the day. We're going to make it all the way up to 84, not as hot as yesterday. We're still going to be nearly 15 degrees above normal later on. Plus, we're going to have, like I said, more of that uh, humidity out there. The aquifer dropped down six tenths of a foot in yesterday's reading. Allergens, well, once again, just got a whole laundry list out there. I don't know about you, I was out cutting the grass yesterday and boy, hitting those oak leaves and all that pollen and everything. Yeah, we're getting definitely into the uh, the oak pollen season. We do have some fog to deal with this morning. Now, nothing like what we had around here the past couple of mornings, but notice down to the southeast, uh, right around Beeville, Victoria, hint of fog, a hint around New Braunfels. Again, that's because this humidity is starting to work its way back in here. We've got temperatures that are in the 50s. Walked outside this morning is fairly pleasant. We had mostly clear skies here in town, but notice how the dew points, which yeah, still 38 in comfort, 45 in town is not bad when you look at the scale here. However, here's all the moisture, which is going to be working its way back in here throughout the course of the day. So increasing clouds, increasing humidity, mid 80s later on today. Tomorrow, a couple of showers here and there off and on throughout the day. Then we'll have some of those storms later on tomorrow night, overnight into the early morning hours of Friday. We'll start to clear out then. A front's going to move through here. That's setting us up for a great weekend and actually just a tad on the cool side this weekend and looking once again into next week for spring break for a lot of folks. Overall, nice. We do have a couple of rain chances. We'll get all those details in just a couple of moments. Traffic Authority, Mr. Marquez, good morning, sir. All right, What's good morning, on? Mike. Yeah, good morning to everyone out there. Things looking pretty good on the roadways right now. A couple things to let you know about, but first, let's check in with TransGuide traffic cameras. Highway 16 there, Wurzbach traffic moving pretty good there. 90 military, both directions, traffic moving pretty smooth, and that's a good sign considering the past two days has been very busy during our 5 o'clock hour. One smaller thing to let you know about right now, have a stalled vehicle being reported. 35 southbound at I-10, that's going to be the downtown at the Y section. So this will be all of our traffic coming into downtown from from uh, the 35 area. You do see a little bit of delays there. There's obviously some ongoing construction there taking place as well. <coughs> so speaking of construction, that's kind of the things that we're seeing. Keeping an eye on here overnight, there's been some road work that's been taking place. Uh, it's been restriping work that Texod is doing uh, through tomorrow morning. So what they're doing is kind of these rolling sort of maintenance work throughout uh, the I-10 area here. So it's going to be all the way from UTSA Boulevard down to the downtown area. Now, they're not causing any major backups or delays right now. So 
But if you do see those crews, those convoys out there, make sure to give them some space to work. Speaking of some overnight closures, hopefully we're about to clear things up here. And if you live around the uh, Six Flags area, you've probably run into this right now. So 1604 westbound from Lock Hill Selma to I-10. That has been closed for some of that overnight work there at the 1604 expansion. Obviously, the access road is still open if you still need to get from Lock Hill Selma to I-10. And uh, they are expected to wrap up this work here through the rest of this week, through March 8th at least. So the rest of the city, though, everything else is looking good for the most part. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. RJ, thank you. Back to the primary when it comes to the U.S. Senate race in Texas. Republican Ted Cruz just clinched his party's nomination. The question is, which Democrat is going to face him? So this was a nine-person race on the Democratic side for U.S. Senate, but it came down to two, and it's hardly been close. Uh, here's a look at the statewide results first. State Senator Roland Gutierrez up against Colin Allred, a U.S. rep from North Texas. Gutierrez, who represents the Uvalde area, has been a huge proponent of gun control in the wake of the Robb Elementary School shooting. Allred, not a name well known in South Texas, but a name that raked in the campaign dollars. And here's the results in Bear County. Colin Allred has claimed victory there and will be facing Ted Cruz in November for the race for the U.S. Senate despite a large... But I promise you here right now that my fight against Ted Cruz isn't over and my fight against Donald Trump isn't over and my fight against these Republicans isn't over because, folks, they don't give one damn red cent about you. And I can't tell you how much it means to me to be your nominee, to be the next senator from the great state of Texas. And while I will be the Democratic nominee, I want every Texan to know, whether you're a Democrat, an independent, or Republican, that I want you to be involved in this campaign. And I want to serve you in the United States Senate. Let's go now to the Republican race for U.S. District 23. Well, the seat currently belongs to Tony Gonzalez. Four people challenged him for that nomination. If you can look right there at the numbers, Gonzalez at 45% of the vote. Our Danielle Ibarra has been covering this race from the congressman's office. We did not get a chance to speak with Tony Gonzalez on election night. We reached out to his campaign nine times in the evening, but never heard back. We wanted to talk to Gonzalez about what he thinks about the possibility of heading into a runoff, which it appears by the results he is going to head into a runoff. Gonzalez has held this seat since being elected in 2020. Last year, he was censured by his own party for votes that split with the Republican Party. That includes supporting a bill defending same-sex marriage protections and a bipartisan gun bill. To give you just an idea of how large this district is, it stretches from El Paso all the way here to San Antonio's west side. It covers a large stretch of the Texas border. The candidate Gonzalez will likely face in the runoff is Brandon Herrera. He's a social media personality and a Second Amendment activist. Now, over in the Democratic primary, that vote is split 50-50 between Lee Bossinger and Santos Limon. On the northwest side, Daniela Ibarra, KSAT 12 News. Now, afterwards, Gonzalez did send a statement. He said, quote, I am truly grateful for all those who continue to show trust in me. Tonight, we won all 29 counties in the 23rd District of Texas. Next, we'll do it again, only with a larger margin. State Representative Steve Allison gets upset in his bid for re-election by challenger Mark LaHood in Texas House District 121. The support of Governor Greg Abbott pushed LaHood to an impressive victory in the Republican primary. Dylan Collier spoke to both candidates about how this race played out. Attack ads don't always work in politics, but it appears they have done the trick this time. LaHood, who said he supports the governor's plan on school vouchers, is now on the doorstep of being able to vote on the measure when it is sure to come up at the Texas legislature next year. Allison blamed his loss in the primary on Abbott and even described the governor inserting himself into the race as an inexcusable move. Allison had been targeted by attack ads for months. LaHood told us he felt the momentum shift in his favor in the later stages of this race and says it was time for a change in this heavily Republican district that covers Alamo Heights, Olmos Park, Terrell Hills, and parts of North Bear County. People are tired of politicians saying one thing 
and not doing it. And I tell people, if we fire them more often, they would keep the word. With all the attack ads, uh, you know, that, that were just unmerciful and uncalled for. You know, and that's what's so disappointing, what we've resorted to, and, and uh, we've hit a new low. Laurel Jordan Swift won the Democratic primary and now awaits LaHood in the November election. LaHood will enter that race as the heavy favorite. Reporting on the far north side, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. And now taking a look at the race for Republican state rep in District 44, John Kimball has the seat. He faced three challengers in this race, David Freemark, Greg Switzer, and Alan Schoolcraft. And there are the numbers look, looking at Schoolcraft with 48% of the vote. In Uvalde, we're following a handful of races. The incumbent for those races, Sheriff Ruben Olasco, Constable Precinct 1 Johnny Field, and Constable Precinct 6 Emmanuel Zamora were all named in the Department of Justice report because they all responded to Robb Elementary the day 21 people were killed. Now the sheriff's race is going into a runoff between Nolasco and challenger Otto Arnhem. Zamora will be keeping his Constable Precinct 6 seat overwhelmingly, but the surprise of Super Tuesday is the Constable Precinct 1 spot. Field will be unseated by challenger Max Dorflinger, who also responded to the Rob shooting, but for the Uvalde Police Department. The former mayor of Uvalde, Don McLaughlin, who is running for state representative District 80, is getting huge support in Uvalde County. He will easily be going to the November election against a Democratic challenger. What you see is what you get with me. I'm not afraid to speak out and call it like I see it. I'm going to fight hard for this district, whether whether you're Republican, Democrat, Independent, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. I'm going to fight for the people of the district of uh, District 80 and, you know, try to get things done in our district. We asked McLaughlin if he would still support raising the age to purchase semi-automatic rifles from 18 to 21. Like he said when he was mayor of Uvalde, he says he'll have to assess where things like mental health and violent video games are before he makes a decision on that. This morning, the picture of the presidential race has become clearer. President Biden is gliding to the Democratic nomination with his predecessor, Donald Trump, heading toward a third Republican nomination and a rematch against the president. As ABC's Ike Jachi reports, there were cautionary signs playing out for both President Biden and Donald Trump, all while Nikki Haley continued her long streak of losing big to Trump. The picture is clear. President Biden and former President Donald Trump are the overwhelming favorites to face each other in November's election. Biden and Trump dominating Super Tuesday races across the country, securing delegates with notable victories in Texas and California. I'm going to vote for President Trump. I want to cast my vote for Joe Biden. For Republicans, Trump winning by large margins in all states except well, for Vermont, for whereas GOP challenger Nikki Haley walked away with her first state of the primary season. They uh, call it Super Tuesday for a reason. This is a big one. Haley continues to win a portion of the vote, between 20 to 30 percent in some states. Trump, not mentioning Haley by name, says it's time for the Republican Party to be unified while turning his focus to the general election. We want to have unity, and we're going to have unity, and it's going to happen very quickly. For Democrats, President Biden winning nearly all the delegates so far. Biden releasing a statement on the results, saying the American people have a clear choice, writing to millions of voters across the country made their voices heard, showing that they are ready to fight back against Donald Trump's extreme plan to take us backwards. Still, both candidates are facing cautionary signs. Biden continues to see voter pushback for his handling of Israel's war with Hamas. On Tuesday in Minnesota, an unusually high number of Democrats voting uncommitted in protest. As for Trump, his issues stem from suburban and women voters turned off by his message and rhetoric. President Trump is enjoying a resounding victory tonight, just shy of a sweep, but you're also seeing some warning signs in there. But you are seeing some places where Republicans continue to resist the idea of Donald Trump. Looking ahead, President Biden will have a chance to reinforce his campaign message at Thursday's State of the Union address, where for the first time, the entire message will be live streamed from the POTUS Instagram account. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. For a complete recap of the 2024 primary elections, just head to ksat.com and look for this article. Runoff elections are coming up pretty quick on May 28th. Right now, 514, 58 degrees. Go ahead and look out there with a live cam this morning. I want to say a little cooler than it was yesterday.
Uh, and hopefully we'll have a little bit of a cooler afternoon, but we're going to check in with Mike very soon. And as we head to break here, results from some other races we are following this morning. We have some breaking news in the political race after Super Tuesday. Sources are now telling ABC News that Nikki Haley will suspend her presidential campaign, making her the last of Trump's major rivals to exit the GOP race. Haley is expected to make the announcement she is exiting the race later today. We'll keep you posted. And here at home, fire forced people living in a northeast side apartment complex to evacuate late last night. It happened just before 11 p.m. in the 1900 block of Northeast Loop 410. Firefighters tell us that the fire started on the second floor and six apartments were affected. Several people were evacuated out and a dog had to be rescued from a first floor apartment. One person was taken to the hospital in serious condition. The cause of this fire is still under investigation. To an active silver alert from the Port Aransas area, the Ingleside Police Department is searching for 82-year-old Willie Hill. Police say Hill is six feet tall with gray hair, blue eyes, and was wearing a blue shirt with a stripe on the shoulder and khaki pants. He also has a cognitive impairment. Ingleside police say he vanished yesterday afternoon at 245 in Ingleside near Corpus Christi Bay. He was driving a silver 2008 Dodge Ram 1500 pickup with a license plate CWZ 8589. If you have any information, you're asked to call the Ingleside Police Department. You will see this alert on Transguide as you head into work or school this morning. Time now is 519 and we're in the I was going to say the high 50s earlier this morning. I just saw some flashing lights at 35 in Topperwine, and then the camera jumped to uh, a different spot on 35. There's Palo Alto. RJ is on top of things. We'll talk to him coming up. Why always the couch? Does he need to go to puppy school? Get his little puppy diploma. How much have I been spending on this little guy? When your questions about life turn into questions about money, there's Erica, the virtual financial assistant to help you spend, save, and plan smarter. Only from Bank of America. What would you like the power to do? There's something going around the Gordon hole. Good thing Gertrude found Delsum. Now what's going around is 12-hour cough relief. And the giggles. The family that takes Delsum together feels better together. Nature's Bounty Hair Growth. Help grow thicker, fuller hair with just one capsule a day of Advanced Hair Complex. Conquer hair thinning. And fall in love with your hair all over again. Only from Nature's Bounty. 522, welcome back. Yes, welcome back. Uh, at last check, I like the roads look a little better, but we do see a, you know, some flashing lights out there. Yeah, guys, so compared to the past couple of days, things looking pretty good in terms of our crashes and delays. There's been some pretty big crashes that we've seen past two days, but uh, the biggest thing we're seeing right now is some lingering construction out there on the northeast side. This is what you were guys referring to right before we went to break. Taking a look here, 35 southbound at uh, Topper Wine. So some good news here is that uh, got out, just got off the phone trans guy. They say that uh, they do expect for this uh, work convoy to clear things out here in the next uh, 10 to 15 minutes or so. So just be a little patient if you are driving in southbound right now from the Live Oak area to Topper Wine Road. You do see a pretty good backup here all the way to Rotama Parkway on the northeast side there. But again, some good news. Things are expected to clear out here in just a bit. Uh, that's the biggest thing that we're seeing at the moment right now. We mentioned earlier we had a stalled vehicle that was at downtown at the Y. 35 southbound at I-10, but uh, according to our maps and basically on everything I've seen on Transguide, that has cleared out as well. All right, we've been talking a lot about spring break coming up. That is right around the corner. So uh, we also been talking about, uh, you know, how this impacts drinking and driving. So this week, Johnson High School, seeing this video here, is hosting a driver safety program called Shattered Dreams, and this is all to promote responsible decision making for students regarding underage drinking and distracted driving. So this is a mock demonstration right here. Do you want to get that? Make sure that people understand that this is only a display of a drunk driving crash and of course the aftermath of that uh, potential deadly incident there. So but this did involve real life emergency officials and police and part of the demonstration shows a driver also being arrested and put in handcuffs. So get this, many students didn't even know that this was taking place at Johnson yesterday. Parents, other students and school officials spent hours getting this demonstration all together. 
My fellow classmates and my fellow students safe and that they really become aware of the dangers of what is actually going on here and like the consequences of their actions. By seeing my own children in college making uh, better choices um, and their friends making better choices and just watching out for each other. All right, so again, this is a mock demonstration, even though it involves uh, some real life officials and emergency crews out there at Johnson High School. So according to the Centers for Disease Control, vehicle crashes are the leading cause of death for U.S. teenagers, 16s ages 6 to 19 die every day from motor vehicle crashes. And coming back out here to our cameras here real quick. As we get one more look here, if you could guys get back to me real soon here. Here we go. Yeah. And again, traffic looking pretty good right now. But again, the whole goal of that is just to save lives and to get the word out about drinking and driving, especially as we head into <coughs> the spring break week. All right, Mike, how are things looking outside? It was definitely warm yesterday. Oh, felt that. Yeah, for very sure. warm. But we had that low humidity in the afternoon. So and that's what allowed it to get so hot. We did get up to 91 yesterday. First time since October 21st that we hit 90 out there at the airport. But yeah, it was very comfortable in the afternoon. Not too bad cutting the grass, except for all that oak pollen out there. Gorgeous, gorgeous sunset yesterday. Boy, that's a pretty picture. Thank you, Mr. McClellan, for that one. This morning, starting off, no problems out there uh, anywhere around town as far as any fog is concerned. But we do have some fog well down to the south around Laredo, Beeville, uh, hints of it around Corpus Christi, LaGrange. The humidity is starting to work its way back into the picture. It had dropped down. We had these numbers yesterday were actually down in the 30s, the dew point temperature sort of the measure of moisture in the air, but now they've steadily been going up. Look at that, 62 at Pleasanton, 65 Catula, Gonzalez 64, and again, this continues to, to pump on in here, so it is going to be more humid later on this afternoon, overnight, and then tomorrow throughout the day. I mean, look at this, just downright humid, and that's going to help to feed some of the showers that are going to be around throughout the course of the day tomorrow. Today, we have a good looking sunrise this morning. We'll have a few clouds around here and we'll sort of see the clouds increasing as the day rolls on 80 at noon. We are going to be definitely on the hot side, almost 15 and above normal up to 84. More of these kind of mid high clouds hanging around here and again, more humidity with that southeasterly wind that's going to be moving on in here. Uh, there's the what the computer model shows as clouds coming in. We're not going to be completely socked in, but again, a fair amount of clouds around here. Now, as we go into tomorrow, then couple of showers are going to develop in the morning. We may have a bit of a damp commute. And then we have sort of two waves of rain, one during the day. And then especially tomorrow night, we see some of these showers and thunderstorms that are going to work their way across the area. Those are the ones that may be on the strong, potentially severe side, primarily up in the hill country. But the northwestern half of our viewing area at least has a small chance to see something severe. But again, most of this, most of the activity is going to be further on up to the north. That that's going to get on out of here. Things will clear out nicely during the day on Friday, and we have a front moving on through 74 tomorrow after 84 today. And then on Friday, with the clear skies, we are going to hit 80. The front comes through, and look at that. Actually, on the coolish side, mid upper 60s, below normal by uh, on average about five degrees in the uh, afternoons and upper mid to upper 40s to start off. Of course, you got to set your clocks ahead one hour on Sunday. So good looking weekend is in store. More after this. In today's Tech Bites, a TikTok showdown. House lawmakers have introduced a bill preventing distribution of the service in the U.S. unless TikTok here in the U.S severs its ties with its parent company, Chinese-owned ByteDance. The bipartisan measure aims to keep TikTok out of app stores. Apple is now including transcripts for its podcasts. The auto-generated transcripts will appear shortly after a podcast is published. But podcasters can opt out if they want to upload their own transcript or edit the one Apple provides. The feature comes with the company's latest software update. Finally, Waze is rolling out new features to help get you where you're going. The Google-owned navigation app will soon let you know when speed limits are about to drop, also the best ways to get through a roundabout. It's also adding information about parking garage locations. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Time now is 531, 59 degrees. Well, Super Tuesday is over. Now the results are in. Up next, to look at some of the top local races, plus some breaking news regarding Nikki Haley's presidential run. Back to late breaking news. San Antonio firefighters scratching their heads after rescuing a woman from a fire. They say once they brought her out of the burning house, she took off running. Katrina Weber is live where it's happened. North Colorado.
Katrina. Well, good morning. Yeah, that's the thing that has uh, firefighters scratching their heads is that the woman appeared to have smoke inhalation, but it, she didn't stick around to get any help. They had uh, paramedics here on standby to help her, but she took off running. Now, the house she was in is behind these engines. Uh, it's kind of difficult to see, but according to firefighters, that was supposed to be a vacant house. They say when they got here, they did find the house on fire. They also found the woman toward the back of the house and had to pull her out. And again, she did suffer smoke inhalation, according to firefighters, did not get any treatment. They were able to knock out that fire pretty quickly and keep it from causing damage to either of the homes next to it, which are very close to it. Uh, but they do not know yet what the cause of the fire was. They do have investigators here uh, looking into that. They say it appears this woman may have been staying in this house, even though it was supposed to be vacant. Reporting live just west of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Traffic and weather in a moment. Super Tuesday is now over. Time for some election results in the race for president. Former President Donald Trump easily won our state's primary over Republican Nikki Haley. ABC News just reported that Nikki Haley will now end her presidential campaign later today after a slew of losses last night. So here's a look at the numbers here in Bear County. We're going to have more primary election coverage coming up. Well, good morning to you, everybody. It is Wednesday, March 6th. Thanks for joining us. We hope you've had a good week so far. And you were right about it being uh, comfortable in the shade only in the afternoon. Yes, <laughs> it was a little warm. I cut the grass yesterday, not only dealing with 90s and then all the oak leaves on the ground and everything like that. So, yeah, if you're an oak sufferer, we are definitely getting into the season right there. And uh, sorry if I stirred up all the oak pollen yesterday <laughs> with my lawnmower. So uh, this morning we're starting off with a lot of clear skies out there. And, yeah, we did hit 91 degrees. We are not going to be hitting that. It's still going to be on the warm side though today 58 and these numbers are starting to climb up here dew point is up to 45 at one point now that's still comfortable you know you're below 60 that's nice at one point yesterday we were down in the mid 30s so we've already started to see that humidity try and work its way back on in here and that's why we're starting to see some fog down to the south a little bit around Catula, Laredo, Beeville, Victoria a hint of it there right around uh, LaGrange temperature right now again 58 in town so so once again, we're still on the above normal side and uh, pretty much 50s all around the area, although 47 there in comfort. And then look at the dew point temperatures, 30s in the hill country, really nice and pleasant, pleasant here. And then notice how these numbers, 53 stints and 54 in Seguin and the, all that humidity down there to the southeast is going to continue to push on in here throughout the day. Oak is on the moderate side and everything else is low. This is from yesterday's reading, of course. Now throughout the day, we're going to make it up to 80 at noon, 84 high temperature again still almost 15 above normal we'll still have a lot of uh, kind of mid high clouds thickening up as the day rolls on humidity continues to increase then we have some rain chances as we come into tomorrow and the chance for even a couple of stronger storms got a front which is going to the timing of it couldn't be better. It's going to bring in a perfect weekend for us. Those details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ, anything big going on? All right, Mike, uh, nothing big going on right now. And uh, so, Mike, you were the culprits, huh? To let yes. the, all the oak out. The oak, yes. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, I definitely felt a little bit of that yesterday. All right, take a quick check of traffic here. Loop 410, Jackson County traffic moving pretty good there. 410 Babcock Road, same situation as well. Let's take you out to our citywide map, and you do see here that uh, things are looking pretty good out there. We had a stalled vehicle downtown at the Y. That has been cleared out. And then there was another stall that Texan was reported. Loop 410 at Callahan, that has been cleared out as well. Biggest thing we're seeing right now at the moment is still some lingering construction out on the uh, far northeast side. That construction affecting everyone traveling southbound 35 from Topper Wine up to the Forum, but uh, Ed Trans Guy just said a little while ago that hopefully that clears out uh, within the next couple of minutes or so. So if you need to head out right now, right now would definitely be a good time to hit the roads. Mark and Stephanie, back to you. Thank you, RJ. Back to primary election results. Bear County Commissioner Rebecca Clay Flores is set to head to a runoff after, after she failed to get more than 50% of the vote last night. She faced off against five Democrats in yesterday's primaries. Patty Santos tells us the incumbent isn't happy this race is heading to a runoff. Yeah, it appears she wasn't too happy with the results from tonight's uh, elections. She left uh, her watch party tonight without talking to KSAT. She knew we were here waiting for her final thoughts on this runoff. 
It was a long night for the Rebecca Clay Flores' camp. It was such a close race that she waited until the very last numbers were in before deciding that this was going to be a runoff. She was watching those numbers, hoping to break the 50% mark. About two miles away, her opponent, Amanda Gonzalez, celebrated this runoff as a victory. She says it's clear that people are not happy with the status quo, and that shows after tonight's election. Gonzalez is rallying up support from those other candidates who ran against Clay Flores, and she has the support of the Bear County Sheriff Deputies Association. For Gonzalez, the focus for her campaign is on public safety. Clay Flores says she's focused on expanding mental health services for her community. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is making sure um, that public safety is at the forefront. I believe that all residents should feel safe inside and outside of their homes. Um, and I think in this race, most importantly, we have seen that public safety is not a priority. We serve the rural communities as well. So that's something that's really lacking more mental health forensic beds, not just for adults, but for our teenagers as well. The runoff will happen at the end of May. Whoever wins that race will head to the November elections against Republican Lida Prado. For GMSA, I'm Patty Santos. The race for GOP Bear County Commissioner Precinct 3 has been a tight one. Republican Grant Moody won the seat in a special election in 2022, so let's go to our latest numbers. Here is the screen. Grant Moody winning 53% over Chris Schuchart's 47%. KSAT's Garrett Berger has more. Grant Moody's watch party ended on election night without a clear victory, though he told his gathered supporters that he was encouraged by the early results. Moody's a former active duty Marine F-18 pilot and has held leadership roles at USAA and Valero Energy. He's currently the lone Republican on the five member Bear County Commissioner's Court. Though he pointed to a new property tax exemption and more law enforcement officers in the county budget as things he was still able to accomplish. Having had 15 months in office now, I asked him what he could do with 48 months, a full four year term. His answer, a lot more. You know, we focused on public safety, which I still think is, is foundational and pri priority number one. Uh, but also there's work to be done around spending, around making sure we get um, you know, our, our property taxes down. You know, the state's made some progress. We were able to secure a $70 million property tax cut for the hospital district, but there's more work that needs to be done on that front as well. Moody's opponent in the Republican primary, business owner Chris Schuhart, has tried to position himself to the right of Moody, accusing the incumbent of voting with the court's Democrats most of the time instead of making an ideological stand. Moody has said most county business isn't partisan. And while Schuhart's argument appeared to help him keep close to Moody, it was not close enough to close the gap. Moody will now run again against Susan Corbell, the Democratic candidate who ran unopposed. Corbell and Moody faced off in the special election, which he won in November 2022. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. And for a complete recap of the 2024 primary elections, just head over to KSAT.com and look for this article. Runoff elections are coming up on May 28th. This morning, 542, 59 degrees. San Antonio Spurs taking on the Rockets last night, and it wasn't a good night for Wimby. Outside with live cam, 59 degrees. Dress accordingly as we take a look at San Antonio waking up on a Wednesday morning. It's hump day. As we go to break here, look at some results from other races we are following. Wimby was going to play last night, but he got the green light to face the Houston Rockets, and he made an immediate impact by scoring the game's first five points. First quarter, Wimby blocks Alperin Shingun's shot, grabs the defensive rebound, and then takes the ball back the other way, and then drains the three-pointer over Shingun. It is 5-0 Spurs. Spurs led 53-47 at half. Time. All right, third quarter. Play gets a little chippy. Eamon Thompson and Jeremy Sohan collide for a rebound, going for a rebound. Jeremy down, and then Thompson gets tripped and falls as Jeremy runs back the collide, and they go face to face, and that's about it. Double technicals were called, and Jeremy was hit with a flagrant one. Spurs trailed 80 77 after three. The Rockets beat our Spurs 114 to 101. Spurs will head west to play the Kings Thursday night at 9 o'clock. Tough team, but go Spurs, go.
Time now 547 and 59 degrees for now. Let's check Trans Guide right now, see how things are looking at 281 and Hildebrand. A lot of you are about to head out the door in the next 15 minutes or so, and RJ has you covered. Welcome back. Hopefully you're having a good Wednesday morning, 5.50 right now. And taking a quick look here at TransGuide. Traffic moving pretty good throughout most of the city of San Antonio. State Highway 16 there at Wurzbach. <coughs> traffic moving pretty well both directions. See if we get one more. 1604 Bandera. Same situation as well as we take a look at our citywide map. Only delays we're seeing right now. Northeast side still that ongoing lingering construction. Hopefully you get that cleared out here sometime soon. Top of wine over to the Live Oak area. Also seen some delays over by Converse in the Rocket Lane right by Judson High School. There's been a lot of uh, construction work taking place there in that area. Rocket Lane over by Judson. I uh, do want to let you know about uh, this uh, note that we got from TxDOT yesterday. There is some road work that's going to be taking place. UTSA Boulevard in both directions of I-10. It's going to be restriping work, so they're going to have some work convoys out there. Uh, pretty much the overnight hours is going to take place through tomorrow morning, so if you see some of those crews out there, make sure to give them the space that they need to get that work done and out of the way. want to let you know about some other ongoing construction that we're seeing. 1604 westbound Lock Hill Cell to I-10. That's going to be closed through uh, this Friday morning overnight hours again, 9 p.m. through 5 a.m. 1604 westbound. That's going to be shut down. There's going to be obviously detours. You could go the access road there in that part of the uh, San Antonio area. So guys, uh, but again, rest of the city, everything's looking pretty good. And I uh, just checked with my correspondent on the ground, my I-10 correspondent, Justin Horn, on that restriping <laughs> work. <laughs> He should be getting in soon. Hopefully, he texted me. He said he hadn't left yet. Okay. It's about 15 minutes ago. So hopefully, okay. <laughs> good luck, Justin. We'll be watching yeah. for you on TransGuide. Yes. Hey, in an un unscientific survey, the amount of sneezing in South Texas went up exponentially, starting about yesterday, Mike. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. We got done with uh, with Mountain Cedar, of course, and then mm -hmm. you know it seems like a lot of people tend to, that overshadows Oak, but I don't know about y'all. Oak always tends to, to hit me a lot more. Now, at least the blue bonnets. People don't sneeze with yeah. these because they are absolutely gorgeous. And the Indian paintbrush out there, what a gorgeous picture. Nothing to sneeze at, right? I wish my yard looked like this. All right, now I'm going to change graphics and uh -huh. talk about this. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. uh, I, I don't know about you. I've, I've got some big oak trees in my lawn and cut the grass yesterday. A million leaves around there and some of that pollen getting kicked up. Not the little dingle fobs, whatever they call them. Catkins, I think, that are hanging from the trees yet, but uh, we're not even really into the the main part of the season. It usually peaks in early April, so yeah, the best is yet to come. And if you are new to town, if you see some of that yellow dust all over everything, that's all of that lovely oak pollen that's going to be coming up fairly soon. We've got uh, a lot of clear skies. Pretty pleasant when you step outside this morning. Maybe a just a light little jacket. We do have some fog down to the south and down to the southeast. Now we got that drier air that moved in here yesterday. That's one of the reasons why along with westerly winds, dry air heats up easily. We did hit 91 degrees, but in the shade, it was fairly comfortable with that dry air. That's all going to be changing and is starting to change with the uh, the humidity, which is working its way back in here. And that's why we do have some of that fog down to the southeast. So we've got 50s this morning and we'll see uh, a few more clouds kind of building in here as the day rolls on as well. 80 at noon and then 84 high temperature. Not 91, but still not a normal high. We're still going to be uh, close to 15 degrees above normal. Now we go in through the rest of today. Yes, clouds will increase. We're not going to be completely socked in, but we'll have a fair amount of them hanging around here. And then we go into tomorrow, and that's when we start to see a couple of showers around here. One or two here and there during the day. And then we're going to have sort of another wave of rain moving in here as we go into tomorrow night. But again, majority of that's going to be further up to the north of us, which is where storm prediction Center does have the the better chance, not a great chance, but the better chance for one or two of those to be strong, potentially severe. So that's going to be tomorrow and then early, early on Friday. Then we get the humidity to drop off with the front moving on through here. It's going to be great over the weekend, but that builds right back in for Tuesday, which is going to be our next really small chance for some uh, showers around here. So today, 84, 74 tomorrow, a little bit closer to where we should be. A couple of showers, clouds all day long. Tomorrow night, showers and a few thunderstorms may be on the strong side, especially up to the north into the wee hours Friday. Probably a damp commute Friday. That front's going to clear things out. Great looking weekend around here. And overall, next week, not bad. Maybe some uh, rain chances coming in here by the middle portion of next week. A lot more after this. Stick around.
We have you covered when it comes to Texas primary results coming up. We'll have an update also from Nikki Haley's presidential campaign. News just in our newsroom in the last hour about that. And checking Trans Guide, things look good at 35 and Palo Alto and at 35 and 1604.